From Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey, it's CSB Evening News, Monday, March 23rd, 2015. Ted Cruz announces his intention to run for president in 2016. A female Afghani scholar killed, sparking protests. A mother reunited with her children after the father was arrested for abducting them. With Matthew Hand, Eliza Ramos, Tom Sacco with sports, and Ryan Bolger with entertainment, your news starts now. It, we have those stories, plus a development in the University of Virginia rape case, the closing of a New Jersey landmark, MTA fair hikes going into effect, that and more coming up. Good evening. I am Eliza Ramos. And I'm Matthew Hand. But first, Senator Ted Cruz has announced his intentions to run in the 2016 presidential election. With a post on Twitter, Cruz became the first major presidential candidate to declare his intentions. In an accompanying video, Cruz called on a new generation of courageous conservatives to help make America great again. The 44-year-old first-term Texas senator spoke in front of an energetic <coughs> crowd of students at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia today as he looks to appeal to the party's conservative voter base. The announcement comes on the fifth anniversary of Obama's health care law, a piece of legislation that led to Cruz embarking on a 21-hour filibuster that thrust him into the national spotlight. As the son of an American mother and a Cuban-born father, Cruz would become the first president of Hispanic descent. 26 people have been arrested in Afghanistan in connection to the death of a 27-year-old woman named Farkunda. Farkunda, a religious scholar, was beaten, pushed from a roof, run over by a car, and set on fire before being tossed into the Cabal River. The woman was accused of burning pages from the Quran. However, police officials have maintained that the allegations which led to the beating were false. Today, hundreds of protesters demanded justice for Farhu Khan, requesting the government to prosecute all those responsible for her death. Thirteen cops based in the area of the mosque were suspended amid allegations. They did nothing to stop the vicious attack. Further discord in D.C. between Congress and the White House over nuclear talks with Iran. A group of 376 members of the House of Representatives signed an open letter to President Obama warning him that any nuclear deal with Iran will require congressional approval from implementation. The move by members of the House follows in similar fashion to the letter sent to Iranian leaders by 47 Republican senators that drew the ire of the White House. The lawmakers laid out their concerns about the pending deal and mentioned time restraints as the key points for a final deal getting done. The emerging diplomatic breakthrough would lift restrictions on Iran's nuclear program, as well as sanctions that have crippled the country's economy. There's a March 31st deadline that is looming for a deal to get done. The disappearance of a family in Alaska last year confounded police. Now authorities believe remains found by a motorist on a wooded trail are those of Rebecca Adams, age 23, her two children and boyfriend. Authorities say the clothing found on the remains is consistent with what is missing from her residence. They also found remains of a dog consistent in size with a dog missing from the home and a handgun with the same serial number as a box found at the home. In a statement, in Kenai, Alaska, Police Lieutenant David Rose urged the public that the investigation remains ongoing and that the families wish for their privacy to be respected at this sensitive time. A press conference today in Charlottesville, Virginia was held regarding an alleged rape case brought to light by Rolling Stone magazine. Here's Peter Orlando with more on the story. I'm here at the University of Virginia campus where Charlottesville Chief of Police Timothy Longo has suspended an investigation regarding an, uh, regarding an alleged rape at a fraternity Phi Kappa Psi. The, they suspended the investigation due to lack of evidence and the accuser's report having several inconsistencies. The inconsistencies are such as no party was held the night of the alleged rape at Phi Kappa Psi. Police found no record of the man she claimed led the assault and the layout of the frat varied from that one Jackie provided to Rolling Stone. Jackie repeatedly refused to cooperate with the investigation and would not provide a statement. According to the chief of police, Jackie will not face charges for her involvement. Two weeks after the article was released by Rolling Stone magazine, they issued an apology and took notice of the discrepancies in Jackie's account. UVA President Teresa A. Sullivan suspended the fraternity, but then reinstated them in January for lack of evidence. Once again, Chief of Police, Charlottesville Chief of Police, Timothy Longo, has suspended the investigation due to lack of evidence and the discrepancies in the accuser's account. Also, Rolling Stone Magazine has issued an apology due to discrepancies in the accuser's account from an earlier published article. Also, since then, UVA President Teresa A. Palmer has reinstated the fraternity Phi Kappa Psi. Reporting from University of Virginia, I'm Peter Orlando, CSB News. 
Europe's rising problem with anti-Semitism seems to have found its way to London. A drunken mob vandalized and stormed a London synagogue early Sunday morning, shouting, kill the Jews. Part of the frightening incident was captured on video. Police say the drunken mob left a nearby party and attempted to break into the synagogue, sparking the dangerous confrontation. This incident is the latest in a growing trend of anti-Semitic actions that have been occurring throughout Europe. Attacks in Paris and Copenhagen earlier this year prompted Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to warn European Jews that their only true safe haven may be in Israel. While previous attacks were driven by Islamic extremists, this latest episode does not appear to involve any religious radicals. Thousands of people gathered in the streets to mourn what officials say is the worst fire tragedy to happen in seven years. Hundreds of mourners filled the Haddad Chapel and thousands more surrounded the streets to say goodbye to seven young lives killed in Brooklyn early Saturday morning. Fire officials are saying the incident started after a hot plate in the kitchen malfunctioned overnight. Gail Sassoon and her eight children were in the home when the blaze began. Just one of Sassoon's eight children made it out alive by jumping from a second floor window. The mother burned and covered in blood, escaped out of her second floor window, screaming for anyone to help her children. It took firefighters just three minutes and 25 seconds to reach Sassoon's home on Bedford Avenue in Midwood. As police and fire rescue arrived at the home, flames met them at the front door. Their following investigation discovered no smoke detectors were found on the first or second floors of the home. The only smoke detector was found in the basement of the home. A secret Nazi hideout has been discovered deep in the jungles of Argentina. Archaeologists unearthed the secret layer after using machetes to clear thick overgrowth in the Teyucuare Park, which is along the country's border with Paraguay. Researchers say the well-hidden outpost was part of a secret Nazi project that built shelters for top leaders in tough-to-reach areas in case they needed to flee Germany. The plan, developed halfway through World War II, was part of a system of escape routes known as rat lines, which were in place for key Third Reich leaders to escape if defeat seemed imminent. All that remains of the thick-walled stone structures are faded swastikas, some German coins from the late 1930s, and some fragments of porcelain pottery. Following the break, we will have the latest on Robert Menendez, Robert Durst, and the closing of a New Jersey landmark. We'll be right back. New York City, the media capital of the world. But in America, there is a world of media at our fingertips from coast to coast. The broadcast media industry connects us in so many ways and remains on the cutting edge of providing us news and entertainment. Have you ever pictured yourself working in the media? Did you ever dream of working in TV or on the radio? Make your dreams come true today. Connecticut School of Broadcasting is the oldest and largest group of communication schools in the country. At Connecticut School of Broadcasting, you'll learn by doing with hands-on training straight from professional broadcasters. There is job placement assistance for graduates, day and evening courses available. Graduate and get into the job market in only 8 or 16 weeks. Don't waste another second daydreaming about what you want to do with your life. Call 1-800-TV-RADIO and start living your dream today. Does going to work every day seem like a chore? When you watch TV or listen to the radio, do you find yourself thinking, I could do that? If you've always wanted a career in the exciting world of broadcasting, then stop dreaming and start doing. As the nation's oldest and largest group of broadcasting schools, the Connecticut School of Broadcasting will train you in a matter of months for the career you've always wanted. Our unique, learn by doing, hands-on training, and small classes taught by industry professionals allow for personalized attention. Whether your interests lie in audio and video production, or if you want to be a TV or radio personality, with 12 campuses spanning the East Coast, CSB can help your dreams become reality. We got our start at CSB. We got our start at CSB. I got my start at CSB. Will you? Hey, listen up. New York is the mecca of media. Connecticut School of Broadcasting is where you want to begin your broadcasting career. Whether you want to become a news anchor, sports broadcaster, radio personality, and not to mention the behind-the-scenes work that makes all those gears turn, CSB is where it's at. With hands-on teaching and state-of-the-art technology, 
the team at CSB can make your dream come true. Come to CSB. You know why? Because you're going to learn everything from voice editing to audio editing. You're going to also learn everything about actual editing of digital media. You will increase your chances of getting into the industry and actually being able to articulate those dreams that you have. That's what I'm experiencing right now. Come to CSB and enjoy yourself. Embattled U.S. Senator Robert Menendez remains staunch in his defense against impending federal corruption charges. Today at a Garwood, New Jersey factory, Menendez wished to speak about his American Star program, new legislation designed to reward companies for keeping their jobs in the U.S. Instead, he faced questions from more than 20 photographers and reporters on allegations that he used his position to benefit friend and campaign donor Solomon Melgan and his business interests in the Dominican Republic. Menendez spoke out against leaks that have occurred during the investigation, stating that these leaks are a violation of federal law and should be thoroughly investigated. He refused to comment on speculation that the that President Obama administration was getting back at Menendez for his opposition to Cuba and Iran policies. Three construction workers are dead and another seriously injured following a scaffolding collapse at a high-rise building in Raleigh, North Carolina. The accident, which happened around 11 a.m., occurred in the city's downtown as a subcontractor was taking down scaffolding on the building's exterior. Witnesses reported hearing a cracking and a popping sound before the metal rigging collapsed between the fifth and sixth floors. The lone survivor was found wearing a safety harness after falling onto a portable toilet. He was taken to a local hospital but was barely responsive at the time. OSHA records indicate that the company that provided the equipment, Associated Scaffolding, has been issued two serious safety violations in the last decade. Former NFL player Dar Darren Sharper has agreed to serve nine years in federal prison stemming from rape charges against him in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, New Orleans, and Arizona. Sharper's attorney negotiated a global settlement deal allowing him to serve roughly nine years for all convictions, including credit for time served in Los Angeles where he has been jailed since 2014. The deal includes a 20-year prison term in California, but because of stipulation in the law and his credit for time served, the deal allows for Sharper to avoid the risk of receiving an even worse punishment in the future and ongoing litigation that can drag on indefinitely in all four states. He, if he had been convicted in Louisiana, he could have faced life in prison and more than 30 years for the Los Angeles charge. He will be on probation for the rest of his life. Now let's go to East Rutherford where Keith Hemmings is standing by with a story on the closing of a New Jersey landmark. After 34 years, the Isa Center finally closed its doors. The Sports and Entertainment Arena closed Sunday after the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus concluded its run. Now, the main attractions for the arena were the Devils and the Nets. But after they bolted for the Prudential Center seven years ago, some say that was the beginning of the end for the arena. The Christie administration, along with the State Sports and Exposition Authority, decided to close the arena because it was projected to lose $8 million this year. The Izod Center has gone through many name changes over the years, starting with the Brendan Byrne Arena, named after the Governor, the Continental Airlines Arena, and now the Izod Center. Now this is a bittersweet ending for some in this area. Bitter because many people will lose their jobs. But sweet because the arena has hosted some of the greatest acts in sports and entertainment. Michael Jackson in 1998, Frank Sinatra in 1990, and also the NCAA Final Four in 1996. But the biggest prize for the arena are the three Stanley Cups the Devils won in 1995, 2001, and 2003. Now we're standing outside the parking lot of the Eyes Eye Center, and we have a guy who calls himself Nitro as a Nets fan. What do you think about the arena closing, Nitro? Well, you know, towards the end of the, the years there, they kind of sucked. So I'm glad they went in the right direction, but they kind of suck now. So I guess that's just the franchise. They're terrible, but I had some good memories there. I asked my girlfriend to marry me at the IZOD Center. She said no, so now I'm lonely. Well, as you can see, he has some bitter experiences at the IZOD Center, <laughs> but uh, I don't really think he has a great take. Back to you guys inside. Millionaire murder suspect Robert Durst was held without bail today at a Louisiana hearing where prosecutors revealed he had stacks of $100 bills and maps of New Orleans, Florida, and Cuba. Durst is back in the headlines for allegedly confessing to murders while taping his HBO documentary, Jinx. 
Prosecutors reminded the court that Durst had become a fugitive when he was indicted for the 2014 murder of his Texas neighbor, whose body he dismembered and dumped in Galveston Bay. Durst claimed self-defense in his neighbor's case and was acquitted of that crime, but later served two years in jail on bond jumping and evidence tampering charges. During today's court appearance, prosecutors said he was expecting a UPS package to his hotel room with shoes, personal items, and another $117,000 in cash. Prosecutors pleaded with the Louisiana judge to remand Bond, citing his fugitive run from the law in 2014. The father of two abducted children waived extradition in Florida today and will be in a Sussex County, New Jersey courthouse by the end of this month. Christopher Dome allegedly took Parker and Jackson Dome, ages 8 and 7, this past February after failing to return them to their mother in landing. They were found late Wednesday at a motel in Newport Ritchie, Florida. The children were unharmed. Authorities say Dome left New Jersey in violation of a custody agreement in early February. In an exclusive interview, Sandy Dome spoke to News 12 New Jersey about the emotional toll the five-week nationwide search for her sons took on her. It's incredibly frustrating. There's a lot of um, feelings that like, I've been going through from anger to just complete and total devastation where I can't hold it together. Police also arrested Dome's friend, Edward Tarras, wanted on several charges in Tennessee, including rape, sexual battery, and sexual exploitation of a minor more than 100 times. A Union County prosecutor says a multi-agency investigation resulted in 10 arrests in Elizabeth, Sunday, in, sa in Elizabeth Saturday night. The suspects were charged with fighting or baiting animals and could face up to five years in prison if convicted. Authorities say 17 dogs were found in the home and the vehicle, including several with obvious injuries. Most of the animals were being kept in small, dirty cages made of steel or plastic. Inside the home was a treadmill, which authorities believed was used to build up the dog's endurance levels in preparation for fights, as well as a dog fighting ring stained with blood. The dogs are currently being held by the SPCA. They will be checked out by the veterinary specialist to determine their condition. Officials would eventually like to have them placed in rehabilitative care. After the break, an update on the MTA fair hike and entertainment news. We'll be back right after this. It's tough these days to find your place in the world. Let the Connecticut School of Broadcasting be the guiding light you need to help you realize your dreams. CSBS campuses all over the country where you'll have access to all the programs used by actual professionals in the field, such as audio editing with Adobe Audition, video editing, and Adobe Premiere. All while learning how to use the high-tech equipment you'll need to get a jump start to your career. Even after you graduate, you'll get lifetime access to all the resources the studios have to offer so that CSB can continue to help you grow and be successful. You'll also get guidance and lessons from professionals who have already made their mark in the field. Join our endless list of successful alumni who have landed jobs at prestigious companies such as ESPN, CBS, Fox, WFAN, and more. Don't waste time. Call 1-800-TV-RADIO today and let CSB help you realize your dream. Are you happy with your current work situation? Is this your dream job? What do you really want to do? Ever think about a career in broadcasting? Well, don't spend another minute in an unhappy work environment. CSB, the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Open since 1964 with 12 campuses spanning the East Coast, CSB will teach you the tools and techniques to establish a major career in radio and television broadcast, audio, video, production work. With small class sizes, CSB instructors provide real-world, hands-on, learn-by-doing training. In only a few short months, you too can be on your way to the career of your dreams. Ever dream of reporting on your favorite teams and interviewing your favorite athletes? Well, we can show you how. My advice to, this is so critical, mm -hmm. follow your dream to begin with. If you want to be in front of the camera, mm -hmm. that's where you start out. We welcome you to CSB, the Connecticut School of Broadcasting.
workers will now have to shell out more MTA coins as the MTA fare and toll hikes went into effect on Sunday. The cost of an MTA card per ride has increased by a quarter to $275. Weekly Metro cards rose $1 to $31, and monthly Metro cards went up $450 to $116.50. In addition, tolls are up 4% for Easy Pass users at MTA bridges and tunnels, and about 6 to 10% for cash customers. The MTA said the fare hike is, is modest and necessary to balance its, its budget against increased cost. The agency said the increase is part of a pattern that began in 2009 to fare hikes every other year, while keeping the increases predictable and modest. Now we go to Ryan Bolger with entertainment news. Pop star Taylor Swift has reportedly purchased several adult websites. I know what you're thinking, what and why? The answer for the young pop star is simply the revenue, which is believed to be in the billions. By putting her moniker on such sites like taylorswift.porn and taylorswift.adult, this strategic move in the biz is called domain squatting. Also, she won't be the only celebrity riding this bandwagon in the coming months. Chris Brown is finally off probation. After the 2009 assault on his ex-girlfriend Rihanna, the Los Angeles District Attorney confirmed Brown had finally completed his 1,000 and a half hours of community service. Chris Brown was charged with criminal assault on February 8, 2009 and is also making criminal threats. He pleaded guilty in June 2009 and accepted the plea deal of community labor. So with that being said, Chris Brown will not be seeing any more court appearances anytime soon. Oscar winner Sean Penn blames George W. Bush and Dick Cheney for starting ISIS. Penn appeared on Conan Thursday night, where he bashed the former Vice President of the United States, Dick Cheney, referring to him as an, I quote, embittered bacteria. Then the actor questioned how Cheney could still be alive given his recent heart battles. He then put the bl full blame on ISIS on Bush and Cheney themselves. In other news, actor Vin Diesel was seen holding back tears during special screening of Fast and Furious 7 in Los Angeles last week. Diesel was given a heartfelt speech right before the first release of the film, in which he explained how emotional it was to make this film, being the last of the Fast and Furious movies. Diesel holds back tears and dedicates the film to late friend Paul Walker. Coming up next, Tom Sackle has your day in sports. Back after these words. New York, the media capital of the world. Los Angeles, the movie epicenter of the universe. Do you desire to break into this fast-paced industry? Let your vision lead you to the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Where we have day and evening classes on 12 campuses along the East Coast. You will get hands-on training to work at some of the top movie studios. Or at the most dynamic news industries. Listen to what these top news anchors have to say. It's amazing. The best decision I've ever made. It's amazing. So call 1-800-TV-RADIO and start your journey at CSB. Walk through these doors. Start your future with the Connecticut School Broadcasting. Where you learn by doing and have access to all sorts of studios in radio and television. Working with state-of-the-art equipment with professional broadcasters. And have access to studios for life and 12 campuses across the country. Yes, 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 yes. Come to the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. As kids, we all have different dreams and different paths, but these were the guys that I grew up watching. These were the guys that inspired me and gave me a dream and gave me a vision. My vision was to work in the number one market in the world, New York City, where the lights shine bright. And my dream, simple, to be a broadcaster. So I did the only thing I could. I opened the door of opportunity to Connecticut School of Broadcasting, or CSB, where my whole world changed. So I hope you're ready to take the ride.
CSB, they teach you with the latest and greatest of technology. And we're trained by industry professionals. And I hope you're not camera shy because we learn with hands-on training. So why don't you own your future and visit them at GoCSB.com or call 1-800-TV-RADIO. In our top story today, the NBA will lose one of its most prolific players as Lakers point guard Steve Nash has decided to retire. Nash is undoubtedly a future Hall of Famer, and the two-time MVP has put together one of the more impressive careers for an undersized point guard. During his prime, he led the number one ranked offense in the league for nine straight years. He will retire third on the all-time assist leaderboard with over 10,000 dimes. He is one of the few players to complete the elusive 50-40-90 season, and he did so four times, two ahead of Larry Bird for most of all time. Nash will retire as the highest rated free throw shooter of all time. However, almost more so than for his incredibly efficient stat lines, Nash is known for his unrivaled drive and toughness. He has overcome countless injuries, including a chronic back condition that forced him to sit on the floor instead of on the bench while on the sidelines of games. Arguably the only thing missing on Nash's resume is a championship ring, but he has done more than enough to be considered a first ballot Hall of Famer. What's next for Steve Nash? He says he'll continue to feed his competitive urges by playing soccer, a sport he's also very gifted at. The NBA will certainly miss Nash, but he will have a long, successful legacy for fans to remember. Now let's get into some sports highlights. First up, Yankees Mets Spring Training Subway Series. CeCe Sabathia and Matt Harvey both taking the mound after returning from long absences last season. Things don't start off well for the Yanks as Juan Ligaris hits one deep to center. Yankees rookie Jose Perella giving chase, but he collides with the wall and he's down. Ligaris hustles around the bases. Here's the throw, it's offline, and that'll be an inside the park home run for Juan Ligaris. Perella would leave the game with a concussion. Same inning, Lucas Duda at the plate, and he crushes one and gives that one a ride deep to right. That one's not coming down. That's long gone. That would be the second of three homers given up by Sabathia. Matt Harvey, on the other hand, was dealing in his fourth start. Gets a swing and a miss there. Next batter, nope, try again. Third batter, way out in front, take a seat. Mets go on to shut out the Yankees for the 6-0 win. The Yankees and Mets have both been mixed bags this spring and have both seen some early injuries, so you can bet both teams are just anxious for the season to start. Next up, number one, Wisconsin, one of the only teams people are giving a chance to knock off Kentucky, took on the Oregon Ducks. Wisconsin-Oregon, and early on we saw some impressive play from both sides. Kaminsky takes it in and lays it up in traffic to take an early lead. Dylan Brooks, not to be outdone, answered with the emphatic jam, and he's hunting badges tonight. Later, Pac-12 Player of the Year Joseph Young shows off his shot, steps back, cash money, he'd end up with 30 in the game. Kaminsky again, drives into the lane with the pretty hook, and that'll give the Badgers a lead they would not surrender. Number one seeded Wisconsin holds on to beat the Oregon Ducks 72-65. That'll do it for sports. Back to you, Matt. And finally, in some uplifting news, New Jersey is celebrating National Puppy Day. Founder Colleen Page created the celebratory day to bring awareness to the benefits of adopting a four-legged furry friend. National Puppy Day began in New Jersey back in 2006 and is now trending worldwide through a social media frenzy. To join in on the fun, visit nationalpuppyday.com to find out how you can donate money, food, and toys to some puppies in need, like these little guys up here. I don't know about you, Tom, but I find myself liking more and more dogs more and more and people less and less. I would have to agree. I am definitely more of a dog person than a people person. That about does it for us tonight. On behalf of Eliza Ramos, Tom Sacco, Ryan Bolger, and our entire news team, I'm Matthew Hand. Thanks for joining us. Safe travels. Struggling to get up and down those stairs to your bedroom? How those struggles cause you to miss out on those intimate moments with your significant other? If you've answered yes to these things, you need Easy Climber in your life. At my age, it's like going up and down the stairs is like having sex. You use up all your energy. But now, I use Easy Climber. I just hop on that chair, and it takes me up the stairs to my room, where I Easy Climb up on my husband. Thank you, Easy Climber. So why struggle up and down those stairs when Easy Climber can give you a lift? It's the safest and most reliable product on the market. Call now at 1-877-2-EASY-CLIMBER.
www.easyclimber.com and we'll surely give you a lift.